Okay, so we have here the different tests for measurement of the three uh, kidney functions. The first one, we have here the test for your evaluation of your glomerular filtration. The test for evaluation of your ability of your glomerulus to filter substance in your blood or to remove substance, you call that once your clearance test. So, pag sinabing clearance test, gagamit tayo ng substance na kayang tanggalin ni glomerulus natin from your blood. So, dito ang substance dapat matanggal ni glomerulus natin papunta dito. And that would be utilized to your substance for evaluation of glomerular filtration. Mean to say kung ano, like for example, if the concentration of that substance in the blood prior to filtration is 100 mg per dl, for example, dapat paglabas na dito, after filtration, going through your proximal convoluted tubules, nalilabas sa ihi natin, same pa rin siya, 100 mg per dl. Okay, so kung hindi niya kaya i-remove or i-filter, mean to say, like, kulang, for example, pag you start with 100, tapos naging ano na lang siya, 80. Okay, so there's something wrong with your, that would eventually uh, be evaluated here as damage to your glomerulus in terms of its filtering capacity. Okay, so we have here the criteria for the substances in order for us then to utilize as a way of uh, measurement of our glomerular filtration rate. Number one, the substance should be readily filtered by the glomerulus. Dapat mafi-filter siya ng glomerulus. Minto sa yung substance natin dapat dito siya pupunta after filtration. Hindi siya dito pupunta sa blood. Kasi pag pumunta sa blood, we could not really evaluate if uh, may problem sa ating glomerulus or hindi. That's why that substance, criteria number one, that substance should be readily filtered by the glomerulus. Second one, that substance should not be reabsorbed nor secreted. Ano mangyari pag na-reabsorb ang substance? Okay, okay. so like for example, if that substance has been filtered by the glomerulus, so dito na siya, pero pag na-reabsorb siya, punta dito, punta sa blood natin, Pag measure natin ang urine as our sample, doon tayo mag-measure kasi sa urine as your sample. Okay, so pag measure mo ng urine as your sample for that, okay, so ano mga expect natin ng concentration ng substance? Okay, yung mawawala ang concentration ng substance or mababawasan. And therefore, nabawasan siya because the substance has been reabsorbed or secreted, for example, something like that then eventually it still affects the results of your testing here. So it will not be a good indicator for evaluation of your kidney functions. Only that, ang pinakakriteria lang natin dapat, your substance should be adequately successfully filtered by the glomerulus but not reabsorbed nor segregated. In order for us to assess the concentration of the substance, when we are measuring the concentration of the substance, it will reflect only here as to the functioning of your glomerulus, not in your renal tubules, not in other part of your nephrons or kidneys. Another one, that substance should be stable here in your specimen for collection. Like if you are collecting the urine, most likely when we're having the clearance test, we are collecting a 24-hour urine collection. So, within 24 hours, dapat hindi na degrade ang ating urine, ang substance na yan sa ating urine sample in order for you to adequately measure the concentration of that as a reflection of your kidneys or glomerulus ability to filter that substance. Another one, that substance also consistent in its level in the plasma, so it's not affected here by the other factors. And number four, there should have an available test of that um, available test here that would enable you to measure. So, dapat my test method tayo or my reagent ka for you to measure that one. Again, those are the criteria for the substance to be used here as our test for glomerular filtration. Okay, so we have here the different substances which are used for evaluation of your glomerular filtration rate. The first one, we have here the urea. Urea is the earliest test substance to use for evaluation of your glomerular filtration rate. The problem with the urea is that this one is being reabsorbed. Okay, so therefore, that one will not really give you um, a very accurate, reliable measure of the ability of your glomerulus to filter substance. 
At the same time, urea is also affected here by high protein diet and even some other factors. So today, urea is not no longer being utilized here as a test for evaluation of glomerular filtration rate. Another one we have here, the inulin. Inulin here is a polymer of fructose, and this one is exogenous substance. Pag sinabi exogenous, this one is not produced by our body. So being exogenous, this one should be administered to the patient. You need to inject this one to the patient. So the injection process, the administration process to the patient, for you to assess that one is very tedious na procedure, medyo matrabaho siya, that will be the drawback of your inulin. And then again, inulin is uh, being filtered by the glomerulus. This is not reabsorbed nor secreted, making this one as really an ideal na substance for evaluation. However, again, ano siya exogenous substance. So medyo matrabaho because you still need to inject this one to the patient. The widely used now for evaluation of glomerular filtration rate, we have your creatinine. Again, creatinine is a product of your muscle metabolisms. This one is en endo, endogenous. It's because this one is inside your body. Okay, so the problem, however, with the creatinine, although this one is routinely being used for evaluation of glomerular filtration rate, there are the following. Number one, some of your creatinine is being secreted by the renal tubules. Again, ang criteria natin dapat, filter lang siya, pero hindi siya nire-absorb, hindi siya sinisecrete. So, the secretion, some part of the creatinine has been secreted, it might affect the evaluation. Second one, when you are measuring the concentration of creatinine in the blood of the patient, may mga chromogens na those are the other factors wherein it could affect the testing process to try to react with the reagent, chemical reagent, Pag nag chemistry test tayo, when we are measuring the serum concentration of your creatinine. Third one, antibiotic administration like gentamicin, cephalosporin, cimetidine try to affect the result of your creatinine. Another one we have here, when you are collecting the urine sample for creatinine clearance, you need to collect that one for 24 hour duration. Mean to say, you need to collect the entire 24 hours. So every time na umiihi ang patient, you need to put that one in the container and you put that one in the refrigerator. Pag hindi siya na properly preserved, your bacteria might decompose your creatinine. It might convert that one to your creatine, which is another byproducts. And with that, pag nag-measure tayo ng creatinine, since the breakdown na siya, bababa ang concentration, it will not give you a true concentration of the patient's creatinine level. And then another one we have here, okay, so again, this, since your creatinine is a product of your muscle metabolism, so patients having a muscle mass problem or diseases might eventually affect the test result as well of this one. And then in the PowerPoint, I think there are many others like uh, creatinine is also affected here by high meat protein diet it might also increase the creatinine level. So those are the disadvantages of this one. But overall, still, creatinine clearance is still routinely being utilized today pa din for evaluation of the GFR. Okay, so we have here the procedure when you are doing your creatinine clearance. Okay, so basically, uh, what you are, your specimen for this one includes your 24-hour urine collection plus your blood or serum sample for creatinine. Okay, so notice here that creatinine clearance is being uh, expressed in terms of ml per minute. Okay, that's why um, it's very important that you need to collect all the volume that you're in here within 24 hours and make sure that one, you're not able to uh, miss here any volume, a single volume of the urine sample within 24 hours because it will affect the results. For the procedure of the urine collection, the first voided na urine sample should be discarded. Pag siya, like for example, the, the patient try to start urinating at 8 a.m. Okay, then the first, the urine collected voided during that 8 a.m., you need to discard. Okay, tapon mo ito. Then, the next urine of the patient, you need to collect... And every time the patient urinate, you put that one in a container and make sure that one, you need to store that one or try to preserve that one. So the best way of preservation is put that one in the refrigerator for 24 hours. Then collect all the specimen 
starting the second void of the urine up to the next day, up to 8 a.m. of the next day, that becomes here your total urine volume for 24 hours. Then towards the end of the urine collection, you should also collect the blood sample of the patient and try also to analyze the concentration of creatinine in the blood of the patient. So the lawa, creatinine concentration the urine plus creatinine concentration in the blood of the patients. When you are doing here the creatinine concentration or measurement of creatinine in the urine of the patient, uh, we are just only using an aliquot sample of the urine for 24 hours. Hindi lahat ng 24 hours na urine sample will be utilizing that one for the analysis of the creatinine. So just need to mix that one the, the entire volume for 24 hours and just get a sample of that that's being required when you're doing the chemical examination, then, then try to measure the creatinine concentration on that. We have here the formula for the computation of creatinine clearance. We have your U stand for the urine creatinine concentration. So ito yung kinulek mo na 24 hour na urine. All you need to do is just uh, measure the concentration of the creatinine by your chemistry test. And then your concentration of creatinine is being expressed in mg per dl. V stands for the total urine volume for 24 hours. So, I measure mo lahat ng 24-hour urine collection by graduated cylinder. And then, try to express it. Well, the unit for this one is ml per minute. Since 24 hours siya, multiply by 60 minutes, that gives you 1,440 minutes. And then, make sure that the volume is being expressed in, in ml. Okay, then... Over the P stand for the plasma creatinine concentration. This is the concentration ni creatinine in the serum or blood ni patient. Kailan ka mag-collect ng blood? When you are about to end the 24-hour urine collection. Mag-extract ka ng blood and try to analyze the creatinine as your blood as your sample for that. And the concentration of the creatinine plasma here is also expressed in mg per dl. I-cancel-cancel mo ito. Ang matira nilang is ml per minute. And therefore, ml per minute, that's the unit of creatinine, cre creatinine clearance. And then again, notice here that ml per minute, so that's why it's very important that you need to collect the entire volume. Pag nag, hindi mo na collect, like you try to miss the collection here, even a single collection, it become an erroneous resource. So, mahirap mag-collect ng 24 hours, especially pag ang patient natin ay admitted, like matanda ang patient, what more pag baby ang patient na hindi nasasabi na ihi ang patient. That is the challenge here for creatinine clearance. Okay, we have here the result for the creatinine would try to be a reflection of your, since your creatinine is a product of your muscle, uh, muscle mass or the muscle metabolism. So, most likely this one is highly uh, correlated with the amount of of the muscle mass. I mean to say, the bigger the individual, you are expecting the higher the creatinine clearance it is. Okay, we have here the normal values for creatinine for the males is 107 to 139 ml per minute. And for the female, it is 7 to 107 ml per minute. What are we expecting here if the patient with a problem in the glomerular filtration? Pag ang result niya ay mababa. Okay, pag mababa ang result niya, it would signify na kay mabagal mag-filter ang glomerulus ni patient. And that will signify defects in your glomerular filtration. Okay, we have the clinical significance of creatinine clearance. Number one, okay, so the result here are based on the functional nephrons. Hindi siya sa number ng nephrons, but how many of those are functioning well? Like, what I mean by that? Diba, may mga individual na nag-donate ng kanilang kidney na isa, isa na lang kidney nila. But then again, if they have a normal pa din ng kanilang creatinine clearance, mean to say, ang remaining na mga nephrons, kahit isang kidney na lang siya, they would able to still be functional or kapag normal kanyang creatinine clearance, mean to say, their nephrons are still functioning well, parang din nagdo-double time sila para compensate for those na mga nawala. Okay, so that's the significance of that. And another one, creatinine clearance is not used for detection of the early renal disease. Hindi niya madidetect. Ito sa pag abnormal ang creatinine clearance, it does not signify here na, it do not signify na you have an early renal disease. 
But rather, pag may problem ka sa glomerular filtration rate, means say, uh, may sakit na talaga ang patient, damage na siya. Noon pa, damage na siya. And you are just correlating the concentration or the level of creatine clearance here as to the extent of the damage, but not for detection of the early renal disease. Another one, we are using creatine clearance to determine the feasibility, the feasibility of administration of your nephrotoxic drugs. What do you mean by that? We could also use creatinine clearance to check if you are what you are taking, for example, the mga medications like your drugs, medications here are causing damage to your kidney. How would you know that your medication is nephrotoxic? So, ganito lang siya. Bago ka mag-take na medication, okay, try to measure first your creatinine. Then, pag naubos na medication, measure mo ulit ang creatinine. Pag ang result ng creatinine mo ay tumaas, okay, or naging abnormal after you try to take the medications, try to consume all the medications, mean to say, the medication itself is causing damage to your kidney. Okay, so like for example, before you take that one, normal ang creatinine clearance or creatinine value, tapos after you take that one, naging abnormal siya, mean to say, so, yan, my mean to say the medication itself is causing damage. Wait. Pa pag creatinine clearance ang sinasabi natin, ang result nito pag may damage ang glomerular filtration rate mo ay mapapa. Pero pag sinabi mo na creatinine concentration, ang level niyan ay mataas dapat. For you to signify na may damage sa kidney ang patient. Okay ulit, pag creatinine lang, ang measure mo na the creatinine clearance itself, pag mataas ang level ng creatinine, it would signify na may damage sa kidney. Pero pag sinabing creatinine clearance, pag mababa ang result ng creatinine clearance, mean to say, mabagal siya mag-filter ang ating glomerulus.